if this movie doesn't leave you on the floor in tears laughing, you need to get your brain checked. Okay, everybody, today we're going all the way back to 1977 to look at one of the, if not funniest sports movies ever made, possibly one of the funniest movies ever made, period. We are talking about 1977's slap shot. Before we go any further, before we dig into this gem anymore, before we go on a little spree and talk about her, once and again, and as always, to the trailer. I'm placing a personal bounty on the head of Tim McCracken. You can't put a bounty on a man's head. I just did. Go oh, get him, killer! It's wild. It's outrageous. It's outrageously funny. Paul Newman, Coach Reggie Dunlop in this supercharged world of hockey, invites you to meet the crazies who make it that way. The players. Murderers Row. The wives. The fans. The managers. We're losing! Teamwork, guys. More teamwork. They're burying us alive! Who are these guys? They brought their toys with them. And hustling them all, Paul Newman. Oh, you are very clever. Leave him. My wife left me. I was driving her crazy. Get out! You can't make him win. You're a losing coach. Okay, guys. Show us what you got. <laughs> Behind the comedy, the sex, the wild excitement. This is the absorbing story of one man fighting to hang on in a world gone absurd. <laughs> never been a film like Slapshot. There may never be another. Okay, everybody, this motion picture was directed by George Roy Hill. Didn't do a ton of stuff. But he did some stuff that you should and probably will remember. We're talking about he did Toys in the Attic. He did The Sting. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. A Little Romance. The Great Waldo Pepper. Funny Farm. The World According to Garp. And, you know, he did some, like, TV work and shit, too. So, not a monstrous career, but a quality career. And that can't even be debated. Okay, playing Reggie Dunlop. Come on, man. Come on. Legendary career. Paul Newman. Let's kick it. We're talking about he was in stuff like The Hustler and HUD and Cool Hand Luke. I mean, come on. How can you not love that? And The Sting and The Towering Inferno and The Verdict and Fort Apache, The Bronx and uh, Absence of Malice and Nobody's Fool and The Color of Money. And Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And the life and times of Judge Roy Bean. And probably a shitload of stuff I just am not remembered at the moment. But that doesn't make a difference. We're talking about legendary career. Legendary. Not just, you know, yeah, he had that little salad dressing. But that doesn't matter. Legendary career. Okay, playing McGrath. Team manager? Struther Martin. Oh, my God. Let's go. We're talking about he was in stuff like Cool Hand Luke, Nightwing, The Champ, True Grit, The Wild Bunch, The End, Hard Times, Rooster Cogburn, The Sons of Katie Elder, Up in Smoke, The Villain, about four million TV shows and TV movies. And come on, man. If you've ever listened to Guns N' Roses, what we have here is failure to communicate. Then you've heard him a million times over and over and over again. Legendary guy. One of my guys. One of those guys I love to see in motion pictures. Let's get go to the next person. Okay. Playing Braden. Michael Onkin. Much bigger on TV than he was in the movies, but we'll get into that 
let's hit it. We're talking about he was on TV and stuff like Ironside and Longstreet. And the rookies, come on, man. Doesn't anybody remember the fucking rookies anymore? And Twin Peaks and Family Album and Outer Limits and North Shore and The Stepford Husbands and In a Child's Name. And he was in some movies, too, you know, like The All-Nighter and Street Justice and whatever. But really, his forte was TV. A forte was TV, I should say. Ha-ha! Whatever. Let's keep moving. Okay. Playing Francine. Jennifer Warren. Was a face that you might remember back in the day. We're talking about she was in flicks like Night Moves and Mutant and Fatal Beauty and Ice Castles, which I actually seen at the drive-ins with my mother when I was a kid. And on TV and stuff like Celebrity and Paper Dolls and Cagney and Lacey and Kojak and the Bob Newhart Show and Murder She Wrote. So, had kind of a distinct face, was around, popped up in a lot of shit, is the way it was. Playing Lily. Angry, angry, angry person. Oof. Lindsay Krause. I just talked about her not too long ago when I reviewed The Arrival. But let's do this shit again. We're talking about she was in stuff like The Verdict and Prince of the City and All the President's Men and Places in the Heart and The Juror and The Arrival, which I already said. And she was on TV and shit like, you know, Dragnet and Hack and Frasier and uh, Law and Order and NYPD Blue. And uh, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and uh, Hill Street Blues. So, good career, been around, popped up in a lot of shit. Might not be a household name, but fuck it. Does that really matter? Probably not. Who cares? And also, there was a lot of other people in this motion picture that you might recognize. Names that we know, some that we don't, but faces that we've seen. You know what I'm talking about? We're talking about M. Emmett Walsh pops up in this jammy. We're talking about Jerry Hauser pops up in this thing, and Swoozy Kurtz, and Paul Dooley, and Andrew Duncan, and Christopher Murney, and even Melinda Dillon, who everybody knows from Come On, A Christmas Story, and she was also the mom, fucking Close Encounters of the Third Kind. She was even in this incredibly topless for an incredibly long period of time. But okay, I shouldn't have said that. Let's keep going with the story. Okay, everybody, we're going to do this in 90 seconds or less so we can keep it fast, keep it entertaining, keep it moving, and so we can get to the summation, which is where we'd all rather be anyway. Hey, so let's go. All right, you got this little minor league hockey team of the Charlestown Chiefs, and their coach player is a guy named Reggie Dunlop. Been around the scene for a long time, been hanging in there. All he knows is this, all he cares about this. Well, he, the team, the town have a major problem. Well, the local mill is shutting down, and when they shut down, you know what? The team is history. He finds out, he knows about this, but he's trying to do anything, anything to keep the spirits of the team alive, including telling them a whole shitload of lies, by the way, and by trying to stir up enough interest in enough controversy and put enough ass in seats so that the owner will rethink the team and sell them to another location. He plants new stories. He lies to everybody around him. He's kind of a shady character, to say the least. Meanwhile, the team's manager, McGrath, is hiring all these waggos. He even hires these three guys called the Hanson Brothers, and whoo -hoo, they're out there. Anyway, Reggie finally realizes the only thing that really matters is not winning, is not anything but putting asses in seats, and if we have to put asses in seats through insane amounts of violence, incredible theatrics, and just act like a bunch of maniacs, then that's what we're gonna do. In the middle of all this, of course, he has a wife that he's kind of separated from and doesn't really have anything going on with. Eh, he's got a friend in the team who doesn't want to be partaking in the violence and has a wife that, well, he ain't really talking to. And you basically have a bunch of sports hijinks and grown men acting like children. Will their plan work to get them so much fame and notoriety that the team owner sells them instead of shit canning them? Will their plans work to take them all the way to the championship? Not playing real hockey, but always playing with an angle, always starting a lot of fights, always getting in people's heads. Well, I'm not going to go any much farther than that and give it away to you, but you got to check it out, you got to watch the movie, and the rest will be golden. Okay, everybody, what makes Slapshot work? Slapshot works simply because it is one of the all-time great comedies, and definitely one of the all-time great sports comedies. 
ever to be committed to celluloid. Ever. Let's go through the basics. The directing, solid. Basic. Straightforward. Nothing tricky or dumb that's going to pull you out of the motion picture, especially in the time zone of the 70s when everything had kind of an ultra documentary real feel to them. And that really aids to this motion picture. The writing, fucking hilarious. I mean, it is spot on. The shit the guys are saying, the way they're acting. There's so many one-liners in this that are not funny because they're meant to be funny. They're just funny watching this bunch of people be who they are, which is the best kind of comedy, the best kind of humor, and it will leave you dying. The acting. <sighs> Let's keep it real, folks. The acting on this shit is top notch. The cast alone that I gave you earlier in this thing is just amazing. And the fact that there's so many real hockey players in this thing pulling it off and getting the job done is just nuts. You can't go any farther into this motion picture. You can't go any more into this motion picture without talking about the obvious cult icons that came out of this motion picture, which was the Hanson brothers. Let's face reality, folks. You think Slapshot? Yeah, you think Paul Newman. Yeah, you think hockey. But you think the Hanson brothers. Plain and simple, just the way it is. And the funny part was, those Hanson brothers, they were really hockey players. You see, Nancy Dowd, who wrote this story, who was the writer of this motion picture, she wrote about what she's seen in real life. Her brother was an actual hockey player on the Johnstown Jets. In this motion picture, they used numerous hockey players from the Johnstown Jets, just to give a little bit of a credibility and a feel to it that they could never get if they dragged in a bunch of actors trying to teach them how to ice skate really quick. Could have done it, wouldn't have mattered. This movie got hockey players, threw them in the roles, and the three handsome brothers were really three guys from the Johnstown Jets named Jeff and Steve Carlson and Dave Hanson. And the three of those guys were buddies in real life, they lived together. So much of their real exploits made it into this motion picture, including like the little racing slot cars, which is what they used to do in their free time. These guys are a little bit known as being physical and, you know, had no problems laying people out on the ice. So there was so much of this motion picture that was Hollywood, but reality. And my favorite quote by Dave Hansen was he said there was a lot more real in this motion picture than there was fake in this motion picture. That this is what minor league hockey was back in the days when the violence of the sport and the insanity of the sport really is what put the asses in the seats. And I really think it's that bit of credibility that leads you in a motion picture to care about and like about is that even word like about a bunch of people who really on the surface might not be the most likable group of people i mean come on paul newman's character reggie he is just lying all the time and using people and playing angles every chance you get mcgrath okay guy but you know he's kind of doing what he has to do for the corporation and for himself Eh, not the best Half the other people are just either crazed, mentally disturbed, violent, extreme perverts, or whatever you name it. They might not be the kind of people that you would want to send your daughter out on a date with. They might not be the kind of ladies you'd want your son to bring home from a date. But in the end, the realism, the authentic feel, the humor, and the fact that all these people underneath their layers of whatever basically do have good hearts and in their own strange way are doing things because they care because things mean something to them because these people mean something to them so they're flawed characters well they're very flawed characters but they are characters that are relatable and enjoyable and will make you care and will make you laugh and will make you have a great two hours of time that you might never get from another motion picture again.
Okay, everybody, I'm going to wrap this up in a little bow, and we'll get out of here. No matter what you do, go watch Slapshot. Right up there with the Bad News Bears as probably one of the greatest sports movies ever, ever made. There was a lot that came out around that time. Whether it was North Dallas 40 with Fish State, State Pittsburgh, whatever it is, there was a bunch of them. But this one is on the Mount Rushmore. Excellent acting. Incredible writing. Interesting characters. And how many movies, really, not counting the Mighty Ducks flicks, get made about the sport of hockey? We've seen a million baseball movies. We've seen a million football movies. We've seen a bunch of boxing flicks. You don't get hockey brought up all that much. You don't get it brought up that consistently. These guys did it. They did it flawlessly. They did it in a way that will leave you in stitches. Okay, everybody. Be good. Take care. Stay out of trouble. Help a friend. Look out for a neighbor. Be kind to a stranger. And above all else, under no circumstances, on any day of the week, take any bullshit from anybody. Be good. See you soon.